Hola amigos, que tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with another live stream. 7.30 p.m. Spain mainland time, 6.30 of course in the Canary Islands and also here in Portugal. Mainland Spain still uh, not on the correct time, I don't think, and I don't know if it will ever change. But 7.30 there on this August day, the 7th of August 2023. And we're going to have a look at some of the main stories that have caught my attention today in the press. We'll have a look at some comments as we normally do. Then in the second half of the video, we'll go into the chat section here to my right and see what the topics of conversation are in the chat. Now, straight into the news and bad news for political party Podemos. And as we can see here, uh, it has initiated a redundancy plan to close its headquarters in nine autonomous communities and lay off half of its workers. Podemos has announced to its workers the opening of an employment regulation plan, or ERE as it's known in Spanish, which foresees the closure of nine of its territorial delegations and the dismissal of at least half of its staff as a consequence of the loss of institutional representation in the regional elections on the 28th of May and in the general elections on the 23rd of July. This was announced by the party in a letter dated the 24th of July, the day after the general elections, sent to its employees as reported by El Periódico de España and accessed by Europa Press. In it, Podemos assumes that it is facing a new scenario after the two elections, which, in addition to the loss of political weight, implies a significant reduction in income. Specifically, it reveals that an initial assessment of the situation puts the losses at 70% at the national level and approximately 90% in the territory. So there we go. Podemos in a bit of strife at the moment, laying off workers, because there's no more cash coming in. Revenues down 70% at a national level, down 90% at a uh, territorial level. So uh, no cash, no cash there, as uh, someone once said in a movie. And uh, it's ironic, because Podemos was one of these political parties that were against the use of the ERE, or E-R-E, or as we saw there, the, uh, what's it called? The Employment Regulation Plan, which allows companies, they have to ask for permission first, to lay off workers. And uh, we'll see uh, how many or who gets the sack from Podemos. I don't think any of the big names will lose their jobs, but people further down the line, no doubt. So as I said, a little bit ironic. Another piece of news here, uh, and this is the story that's dominating the press at the moment. Daniel Sancho uh, has confessed to the crime after his arrest in Thailand and says he was a hostage of his victim. I want to collaborate, he says. Spanish man Daniel Sancho, son of actor Rodolfo Sancho, arrested this weekend on suspicion of murdering his friend, Colombian surgeon Edwin Arrieta, has confessed to the crime and said he did it because he felt that he was being held hostage by the victim. I want to collaborate as much as I can. He said hours before taking, uh, being taken to court, I am guilty, but I was Edwin's hostage. He was holding me hostage. I was, uh, it was a glass cage, but it was a cage. Uh, he made me destroy my relationship with my girlfriend. He made me do things I would never have done, Sancho said during a conversation with, in front of his Thai lawyers and several officers of the Ko Phangan police station uh, where he is being held. And as I said, this story dominating headlines because uh, not only did he murder or allegedly murder this man, or even though he has confessed to it, uh, he went a step further and cut the body up into pieces to try to get rid of it. And uh, I'm going to say that Thailand, perhaps not the best place in the world to get caught murdering someone, considering what they do to uh, criminals for lesser crimes in that country. Maybe the situation has changed over the years, I don't know, but uh, historically very tough penalties in Thailand. And uh, this young Spanish gentleman here, not the first one to do uh, a crime like that, not the first Spanish person to do a crime like that in Thailand. And of course, as we saw there, confessing to the crime and uh, the son of an actor here in Spain and also the grandson of a famous actor back in the day, uh, Sancho Gracia was that actor's name. 
Third piece of news, almost 9 million people already suffer water restrictions due to, due, due to drought in Spain. Let me see if I can get those words out. The thousand or so residents of the town of El Borge in Malaga have been suffering water cuts every morning for the past month. The tap does not run between midnight and 7 o'clock in the morning to allow time for the municipal reservoir to recover and supply the residents throughout the day. This is a disaster. This is not a warning. The wolf is already here, says the mayor, Raul Vallejo, pessimistically, who looks askance at the fact that the reservoir from which they drink, La Vinuela, is only at 8.6% of its capacity, its historic minimum. According to Greenpeace, like them, there are more than 100 towns and cities in Andalusia with some kind of restriction to which are added some other isolated points and the almost 500 declared in a state of exceptionality in Catalonia. In total, more than 8.7 million people are already affected by some kind of water use restriction due to the drought. The majority are in Catalonia, around 6.6 million, and Andalusia, around 2 million. But there are also restrictions in municipalities in Extremadura and, the, and municipalities in Galicia, the Balearic Islands, and Aragon another 150,000 people. So there we go, 9 million people suffering water restrictions due to drought. And as we saw that uh, reservoir down there in the Malaga province in La Vinuela, I think that's the name of the reservoir, 8.6% of its capacity, so very dry. And I remember people telling me on the channel uh, months ago about how dry this reservoir is in Malaga. So uh, situation not good there for some 9 million people with water cuts throughout the day. And uh, one of the reasons why there is a drought, obviously, the hot temperatures not helping. And as we can see here, the thermometers soaring to 44 degrees Celsius as third heat wave begins today. The heat wave will put 15 provinces of Andalusia, Castile and Leon, Castile La Mancha, Extremadura, Galicia, and the community of Madrid at risk yellow or significant risk orange this Monday, the 7th of August, with temperatures of up to 44 degrees Celsius, according to the forecast of the state meteorological agency, the AEMET. Specifically, Cordoba, Huelva, Jaén, Seville, Ciudad Real, Badajoz, and Cáceres will be at significant risk of, of high temperatures, while Avila, Salamanca, Toledo, Aurense, Madrid, Granada, and Cádiz will have a yellow warning for the same phenomenon. Now, very, very hot again, and uh, as we see here in the headline, the third heat wave beginning today, and uh, people bracing themselves for uh, 44, uh, 40 degree plus temperatures, hitting as high as 44 in some areas, most uh, likely the uh, usual places where they get those high temperatures, Cordoba, Seville, down there in Andalusia and uh, other parts of the country, no doubt in the high 30s too. And uh, here in Portugal today, also a hot day. So uh, hot on the Iberian Peninsula at the moment. Now the uh, over uh, touristification, as they're calling it in Spanish, having an effect on Madrid residents. And as we can see here, Madrileños fed up with tourists are leaving the center of the city. We have lost the battle, one has said. Jordi Gordon has been warning for almost a decade that the residents of central Madrid are in danger of extinction. Before the pandemic, his association, SOS Malasaña, had filled the balconies of this neighbourhood adjoining Gran Via with yellow banners, and Gordon often appeared in the media, recognisable by his luxuriant mane of grey hair and his horn-rimmed glasses. But now it is SOS Malasaña itself that seems to be on the verge of extinction. The account has only tweeted eight times in all of 2023, and the usual posters seem to have disappeared from the neighbourhood. Gordon, 67, responds by denying that they are going to to twist their arm. We are in a moment of impasse, he explains, but warns that associations die out if there is no support and relief. So there we go. The problem that many cities in Spain are facing, especially the big cities of Madrid, Barcelona, Valencia, Malaga, uh, where the locals are leaving the centre because no doubt of tourist flats. And as I said, 
touristification, as they're calling it in Spanish. Don't know if that word exists in English, but in Spanish they're using that word to talk about this problem. And uh, people like Mr. Gordon there, fed up with the situation, trying to rally the neighbours, but uh, not having much success, because at the end of the day, people give up and they move out if they're not happy with their neighbourhoods anymore, because uh, there are a lot, there are a lot of changes happening in the centre of Madrid. I recently was in the centre of Madrid, and you can see the differences in uh, neighbourhoods like the one we saw there, Malasaña, which is bang smack in the middle of the city. Now, into the comment section, comments that have been left on videos recently. First one here today from Elder Monkey. Hi, Stuart. Henry here. Uh, it's been an awful summer here in the UK. It's been raining and cold for weeks on end. I'm off to visit someone in Orgiva, Granada, on Friday and really looking forward to sun and cheap coffee. My first flight to Malaga was nearly the same price as a ticket, a train ticket in England, and the Alsa coaches in Spain are super cheap compared to the English buses and coaches. So there we go. Henry heading off to Granada looking for some sun and cheap coffee because uh, probably in the UK, what are you paying now for a cup of coffee at a, at a Costa or a uh, pret a manger How much are you paying? $3.50? £3.50 for a cup? Around that? Don't know. Let me know what you're paying for a cup of coffee in a uh, high-end coffee shop. But in Granada, probably around a euro fifty, you can get a decent cup of coffee. So a lot cheaper there. And the most important thing for Henry is the sun, of course, also. And uh, a lot cheaper, uh, as Henry points out there, the flight to Malaga, the same price as a train ticket in England, and the coaches are cheap in Spain too. So cheaper to get around for the time being. Thanks, Henry, for that comment. Another one here from John, the traveling wino. Does anyone have any further information about the unprovoked attack on the waitress in one of the Balearic Islands when someone shoved the glass into her neck? I know they had uh, CCTV and I'm assuming they were still trapped on the island. Did they manage to escape or were they captured? Does anyone know? Yeah, John, I looked into this and uh, I haven't seen an update. I didn't look into it uh, this week, but I looked into it last week, I think, and I haven't uh, been able to get any new information. Somebody said back in the day when this uh, story first broke, because apparently uh, the Civil Guard and the National Police shut down the island and uh, checking people getting on and getting off the island, but uh, it doesn't seem that they were successful. If anybody knows better, please let me know. It was on the island of Ibiza in the Balearics, and it was a nasty uh, event in which I th uh, allegedly uh, a British woman uh, slashed the throat of a waitress or a manager, hotel manager, with a bottle or a glass, whatever they're saying, and uh, it was a glassing uh, episode there. And uh, as I said, at the time, somebody left a comment saying that that person had already left the island, so they got off the island quick, smart, not delaying the uh, trip home, probably on the first available 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 flight. But apparently, as uh, pointed out there by John, CCVT, CCTV uh, has images of the person in question, and uh, people know who this person is. So it's only a question of time, I imagine, uh, before the police come knocking, I imagine, for a crime committed in Ibiza. Allegedly, but of course, you have to go through the process. Won't she? Another one here from uh, Hank. Lancashire and Yorkshire black pudding fried as part of a full English breakfast. Mmm. Full Scottish. Deep fried anything dipped in salty porridge. Yeah, that sounds uh, nice, doesn't it? Deep fried anything dipped in salty porridge. And I've always wondered why you don't see many Scottish restaurants around the place. You don't see many English restaurants around the place for that matter either, do you? Don't see too many Australian restaurants around the place. Every now and again, one pops up in a city like Madrid, uh, themed type restaurants that sell basically hamburgers. It's a, it's a uh, poor man's American restaurant, I think. American cuisine seems to have uh, gone international, but like I said, you don't see too many English restaurants flying the flag, less Scottish, of course, and I uh, haven't seen an Irish restaurant yet. So maybe if somebody wants to try and uh, put one in action, 
it could be a, there could be a niche market for it. I don't know. But uh, the Scottish one there, as we saw, and, uh, well, you do see English breakfast when you go to the, some of these resorts down in the south of Spain. They'll say uh, English breakfast available for €8.50 Euros 50 or whatever they charge for it. So they do serve some type of English cuisine, but let's be honest, it's not uh, at the same level as the Italian, French, Spanish, Portuguese cuisine, is it? Or at least that's my opinion. Feel free, feel free to comment. Another one here from Chris. We had a week's holiday ruined in Port Polenza, uh, Poyenza, Mallorca last year. At the apartments we were renting by a group of young Brits, drunk and out of control every night. We complained, as did most of the other guests, but nothing was done about it. Yeah, in relation to a story that we, a story that we saw yesterday about a man defecating on another man's head in Mallorca, which was a fairly ugly event. I haven't seen anything like that for a while or anything uh, at that level, at least for a long time, if I've ever seen anything at all. And uh, yeah, tourism out of control. The name, uh, the word Brit was mentioned there, but you put the word German or Dutch or uh, any other European nation nationality for that matter, and uh, you could quite easily have the same sentence because it's not only British people that are out of control. All of the characteristics are there for people to party, get drunk, and uh, basically lose their minds for a week. And uh, whatever happens in these places, we know a lot, of, a lot of the times it gets out of control. You speak to uh, police officers that have worked on the islands, and they have a constant problem for four months of the year, whether it's on Mallorca, whether it's on Ibiza, uh, some of the Canary Islands as well, Tenerife, the south of Tenerife, we know, south of uh, Gran Canaria, uh, you will see this type of behavior because of the uh, cheap alcohol, basically, and uh, people uh, letting their hair down a bit too far. Another one here from uh, Megan. Thanks for stick sticking up for, the for our canine family. I'm with you. Yeah, the dogs um, that I thought were being mistreated the other day, I uh, put it in a video. One dog is abandoned, just sort of sits on top of a fence, uh, sleeps. People bring it water and food. You can see uh, water and food there, but it doesn't belong to anyone, doesn't have a collar. Uh, every time I walk past there with my dog, the uh, the other dog gets up on um, on its fence and doesn't come down. Sort of looks, you know, a little bit uh, afraid when we walk past. Yesterday, it tried to come up to us, but uh, still a little bit uh, shy or afraid. And of course, if you walk along that road, there's uh, three or four dogs that are just tied up, left there all day. And uh, I don't like that type of behavior when people you know instead of putting an alarm in their home they decide to buy a dog as a cheaper alternative and just leave it outside all day uh, in the elements and uh, feeding it probably once a day but are they taking it to the vet does it have a chip does it have all of the other things that dog owners have to do i don't know but uh, they don't look to be in very good shape those dogs that are tied up with uh, big chains around their neck all day and every time somebody walks past they bark and they pull on the uh, leash they run and pull on the leash quite severely and uh, I don't like it and uh, Megan also there thanking me for sticking up and uh, the other one last one here from uh, Joanne I'm sure I sure would like to see a peek at Mia since you're walking her yeah I've uh, realized this recently uh, Joanne that I haven't been showing the dog a lot uh, for whatever reason. Uh, basically, she doesn't really like to go on camera. Uh, I say that uh, with tongue-in-cheek, of course, but I will film the uh, little girl Mia the next time I do one of those videos, which will most likely uh, be sometime this week. So stay tuned for Mia to make an appearance on the channel in a place that she really likes because it's not very hot. She's able to sleep well at night. I, uh, we got her a new bed today, which arrived. So uh, she's getting used to that. Difficult to get rid of the old bed, uh, that's for sure. She wants to hold on to it for as long as she can, but uh, we'll see if she makes the transition to a new bed. Now, I'm going to go into the chat section now. and uh, But before I do that, I'll just do what I always do at this time, which is put the like icon on the screen. You can see it there. Below the video, you will find the like icon. Also, the email address, which is spainspeaks at gmail.com. You can see it. Where is it? Over there. Uh, send me information, articles, 
a uh, few came through uh, came through yesterday and today so uh, feel free to send those through too uh, and also the uh, support button the uh, super thanks buy me a coffee and patreon people that have supported the channel thank you very much for that and uh, the person that sent me the super thanks uh, the very generous super thanks yesterday or this morning thank you very much for that can't remember your name but Thank you very much for that. I'll uh, see if I can find it. Now, we're going to go into the uh, chat section, as I said. Let me uh, get it on the screen. I'll scroll up to the top. I'll check out the activity here. First one that I can see from Andrew on the screen now. Good evening, Stuart, and a warm uh, and all from a warm but sticky, very sticky southeast London. Hope you are all well. Thank you, uh, Andrew, for that. Hope you are well too. Hope all is well in your part of the world there, although a bit sticky, as you say. Barbara's in the chat also, coming in from Playa Flamenca, where it's 27 but feels like 31. I think it was the same yesterday, was it not, Barbara? Similar conditions. Erica's also in the chat from a coolish terrassa, 25 degrees there. Lovely. Well, let's see what tomorrow brings as they are warning for the third heat wave that should last till Friday if the AEMET is right. Hope everyone is fine. Thanks, Erica, for that. Your input there. Uh, Ross also in the chat. Uh, hi, Stu and everyone. Yes, I totally agree with you and John. There are relatively strong animal protection laws in New York City. Left my two pups in uh, Albany with my kids, but there's plenty of barking here. Yeah, uh, as we know, there's a, a new law, I think, uh, John in, uh, Ross in Spain, sorry, that was uh, put in place last year. I think it was passed last year, this new law where um, animal or having animals, it's a lot more uh, strict. Uh, you can't just, uh, you know, there's no more animal selling in uh, pet shops and things like that. Uh, you have to go through all of the um, uh, rules and regulations to get dogs. They were even talking about having some type of test to make sure that you were going to be a, a good owner. Unfortunately, for some, they didn't get the uh, law uh, passed when it comes to hunting dogs. The uh, hunters have a fairly strong lobby, so they didn't get any changes when it comes to that. But uh, for the rest of the uh, dog owners or potential dog owners in Spain, changes last year. Uh, let's have a look. Marianne also coming in, saying hello to everyone here uh, from San Diego, where it's uh, 23.88 degrees Celsius there today. 23.88. CH coming in from North End. Sounds like a place in the United Kingdom. I imagine that it is. Correct me if I'm wrong. North London. Uh, there we go. Uh, trust everyone is a jolly today. North end of London, <laughs> as opposed to the uh, east end and the west end and the south. Is there a south end? Let's uh, let me know. Jonathan also uh, coming in. Uh, I'll have to teach in thirty minutes. But greetings from New York, says Jonathan. Teaching online online nowadays is Jonathan. Uh, Sukariva syndrome saying hello. Janet also in the chat coming in from Oxford saying hello too. Hello, Janet, regular viewer. Hope you're well. Uh, Jimbo Roosters with the uh, Matilda sign here. The World uh, Women World Cup, Australia 2, Neil and England 4-2 on penalties. Go, oh, 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 go. There we go. Missed a couple of uh, S's in that word, but I understand what you mean. And, uh, yeah, big victory there for the... Aussie uh, women's team, 2-0 over uh, Denmark, was it? I think Spain also won the other day, 5-1. So Spain looking good now that the uh, United States are hasta luego, gone. Uh, what else we got going on here? High Flyer also coming in from uh, sunny Sussex, John. Hello, John. Hope you're well. Uh NFL Reading saying, saying hello to everyone also in the chat section. I'll just put that on the screen there quickly. Good to see you. Hank also coming in from Southern California. Hank Blank coming in there today. Good to see you, Hank, also. Uh, let me have a look if I can find another comment here quickly. 
Uh, Jose Antonio from uh, Ciudad Real, which we saw was uh, going to be very hot. I think uh, an orange alert was it there. So going to be hot in that part of Spain. Absolutely, Ciudad Real. Very, very warm. Uh, NSPR 8 CIO coming in from a rainy Portland, Maine. Hope you're well. There's another way to say Oh, Nancy. Hello, Nancy. Hope you're well. From Maine there uh, in the States. Portland, Maine. Uh, Gigi coming in from Gibraltar. Lovely weather for hiking the rock tomorrow. There we go. Careful of the monkeys, uh, Gigi. I wouldn't want to get uh, any have, have problem with the monkeys on that rock uh, down there. Amanda also coming in from Shropshire. Uh, hello, Amanda. Another regular viewer here. He faces the death sentence, says Jose Antonio, talking about the, uh, I think he's a chef, uh, Daniel Sancho who um, uh, murdered uh, a friend. I think he was a friend, even though he said that he uh, had him in a glass cage, uh, whatever that means, speaking metaphorically, of course. Uh, facing the death sentence, yeah, but I read in the paper that there's a precedent um, there with another Spanish guy who did the same thing a few years ago and didn't get the death sentence. So they're hoping for that, uh, Jose Antonio, because... Uh, uh, even as we know, uh, Thailand strict penalties. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, Rich is back to Galicia tomorrow. Hope all goes well with the trip, uh, Rich. Hope all goes well. Kev uh, is in the chat uh, saying hello to Amanda and uh, everyone else. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, what else we got here? Uh, Andrew's missed the last few live streams. There were Renan coming in from Los Angeles. Sani is also in the chat. So I'm seeing lots of regular faces here today, which is good. Uh, let me have a look here. Richard also coming in from North Yorks. Hope everyone is well. We are, Richard, I think. I, I can only speak for myself, of course. Uh, David or David coming in from uh, Scotland, the home of that uh, fried cuisine as we saw before. Uh, what else we got going on here? News and analysis with Arturo coming in from Alaska. That's a, a strange part of the world to be in. Alaska uh, up there. Que tal, says Arturo. Uh, what else? La Vinuela uh, has appeared in this channel more than trice. Uh, fish there cannot run away because of the dam. There we go. Uh, so very, very dry in that dam down there in Malaga. Yeah, it has appeared a few times, I remember, and we had some people living close to there. I think Malcolm was a viewer that was living in the area. Can't remember the uh, surname, but um, yeah, uh, been dry there for a while, and they didn't get those uh, spring rains, I don't think, or not enough, not enough. Uh, Michael asking, are they opening the air conditioning centres? Don't know what that means exactly. If I can have some clarification. Uh, gentrification, another one here. English gentrification, okay. Um, also have good buses, according to Jonathan, so uh, happy with that uh, bus company. Uh, struggling, I think, with the uh, more and more cheaper fast trains coming in, I think. I think that's what I read recently. Uh, Kathy uh, coming in from Shereco, Shereco player in Valencia. Hope I got that right. Ended up getting lobster cell serv service. So far, so good. All English cell service in Spain. Yeah, I, um, I've uh, talked about uh, lobster, I think, and I think I've got them actually on uh, just in the section below, I think, to uh, sign up for lobster. Uh, it's one of these um, referral things that I've got. So if you're looking for an all-English mobile service, uh, Lobster could be the way to go. Uh, people that I've spoken to are happy with them, and Kathy, another person happy there. Another person happy. Uh, Jonathan's telling us the price of uh, coffee in New York, $3 uh, and up for a coffee. Hard to spend less. Yeah, in Spain, hard to spend more than... A euro 50, 60, 70 for a coffee. Here, a euro 10 if you get like a white coffee. If you get a little a small coffee, probably around 90 cents. So coffee's on the way up. Coffee's on the way up. Uh, Reynold, uh, Reynold bought a coffee with uh, free refills from uh, Weatherspoons for £1.2p. Uh, £1 
there we go. One pound two p. Strange price. Uh, Arturo's uh, chipping in on the English food debate. Worst in the world. I don't know whether it's the worst in the world. I wouldn't say that because I've had some good meals in the UK and I grew up basically on a, a British type diet my mother inherited the uh, all of the recipes from her mother and her grandmother so i was brought up on that type of food and it's not bad you can get some good restaurants and there are some good english chefs out there uh, dominating the uh, world and they uh, seem to do some fairly nice dishes it might not be the most elaborate cuisine in the world but it's not the worst not the worst at least that's my opinion i don't know but Feel free to disagree. Um, Ross is hoping that America doesn't follow him uh, there next year. They might do, uh, uh, Ross, if this year is anything to go by. Americans everywhere, or people from the States everywhere uh, in Europe, and Australia as well, as I mentioned the other day. Every time I go to the, a busy uh, coffee shop here with, well, it's a bar coffee shop with nice views, uh, I hear Australians talking. Unbelievable. What else? Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Uh, Patrick saw an Irish bar in Fatagotha last year. It was closed. Yeah, Irish bars you'll get, uh, and the food they serve in them is just, you know, in Madrid, speaking from the ones that I've seen in Madrid, just hamburgers and sandwiches and things like that, fish and chips. So I don't know if there's a, a unique Irish cuisine served in those bars. And that one, uh, biting the dust in Thadagotha, closing down. Keith saying Australian cuisine. What's that? Barbecue kangaroo? It's probably not well known or travels well. Yeah, Keith, Australian cuisine is actually uh, quite good nowadays. It's uh, quite an, a lot of influences down there. You can eat well in a lot of places in Australia. Um, is it exportable, the type of cuisine? Maybe not. Don't know. But uh, kangaroo? Never had it. Um even though I lived there for a long time. Never really made the plate. Never really made uh, my dinner plate, did kangaroo. Kevin. Uh, hi, Stuart. Hope you are well. My mate came over for a holiday and told me the governor is £8.70. St. Helens Supermarket. There we go. £8.70 for the governor. Uh, what is it here in Spain? Two seventy-five, I think. Uh Let's have a look here. El Davido coming in, or David coming in from a hot and dry Murcia, hoping that uh, we're keeping well. Thanks, uh, David. We are. Diego, news and analysis with Arturo. There are worse. Food in Trinidad and Tobago is appalling. I had good meals near Manchester, but very expensive. Our menu del día is a perfect balance of quality and price. Yes, that is uh, true, Diego. Thanks for that. And also saying that the food in England is not that bad. It's not that bad. If you want bad food, you can find it, of course. But uh, you can find decent food. Tap Dave. Hi, Stu again. Have a camper van sales room local to here, and they have a dog to guard the vans when closed. It's shut in a small area 24 hours a day. It's so miserable, the poor soul of the show. Yes, that's also an issue, isn't it, in uh, some of these uh, uh, businesses that uh, skimp on their security and uh, get a dog that sits there all day, which is a shame, but uh, maybe that will change, not sure. In southwest France it is, there we go, so not in Spain, but uh, I've seen it in uh, Spain and Portugal, that type of thing, uh, and no doubt in other places that they still resort to that type of security, having a dog tied up all day. Um... Alan, uh, I quite like uh, Trini Pork Curry with Bus Up Shop from Trinidad. I think people would enjoy food from Trinidad and Tobago as long as they like spicy food. So uh, Alan's sticking up from the food from the Caribbean or Caribbean, however you pronounce it. Uh, TD Zim coming in. Hi from Seattle. Hello. Hope you are well. Um, let me go down here. Uh, the Spanish dog owner is going to be compulsory to have insurance for your pet. The old system is not going to work any longer, or so it seems, says Erica. Yeah, that's all part of that new law, right, that was passed last year. That's right. Simon coming in from Toulouse, back in Lanzarote on the 6th of September to spend the winter, no doubt. Simon, uh, a regular uh, Canarian in those um, 
winter month. Uh, it's already hot, says Jose Antonio. There, he's heading to Guadarrama, Madrid, in the Sierra, to get some cooler weather, no doubt. No doubt, no doubt. There's a south end on the sea. Uh, we lived there for eight years. But is there a south end in London? That's what I was asking, because, of course, you've got your west end, you've got your east end, you've got your uh, north end, as we saw. There is there a south end? I don't know. I've never heard of north end before today either. But that's just me. Uh, Janet's well. Good to see. Had a minor procedure a week ago, but healing well. Good to see, Janet. Good to see. Good to see. Uh, blind spots traveler is it true that spain is to introduce the same rule as france to only allow men to use public hotel swimming pools if they were if they wear i think that's wear budgie smugglers said blind spots traveler budgie smugglers for people that don't know the uh meaning of that is just like a speedos might be a more common word, you know, like racing bathers that you see the Olympic swimmers wearing when they're racing down the pool. In Australia, we call them budgie smugglers because they're uh, smuggling the budgie. Uh, no, haven't heard anything about that. Haven't heard anything about that, no. Uh, let's have a look. <laughs> Alan says, I hope not. I hope not, yes. Yes, that's right. They look okay when you're uh, sit standing on the blocks for the 50-metre sprint at the Olympics, but uh, on some other people, meh, eh, probably to, to whack a trunk on. What else? Uh, Alan's saying, uh, people who complain about food from England don't have a clue. There is no UK cuisine, but there is good food from all over the world. It's excellent. Yes. Oh, and that's what uh, that's true. But if you do go back to some of those um, uh, traditional English dishes, uh, they're, they're not bad. They're not bad. Like I said, maybe not the most elaborate things in the world, but um, not bad. Um, do they open air conditioning centers to the public during the heat waves? Uh, no, I've never heard of that, uh, Michael. I've never heard of that, but uh, shopping centers with air conditioning are open. So that's where people can head to on a hot summer's day. Spain has the best food, says Arturo. Probably maybe Arturo is Spanish and uh, saying that Spain has the best food. Spain's food is okay, but is it the best? Probably not, because if you ask a French person, they're going to say the same thing. If I step outside here and ask uh, my Portuguese neighbor, he's going to say uh, that Portuguese food is the best in the world, because everybody in this part of the world thinks that their cuisine is the best. Italians, wow, you can imagine. Greeks, what are they going to say? But uh, Spanish food is okay. I'm not going to say it's the best because I've had some pretty bad meals in Spain. I've had some good ones and I've had some bad ones. But generally, as Diego pointed out before, the menu del dia, you can get a, a decent, balanced, healthy uh, meal for a reasonable price, which is still good uh, Michael's saying that uh, uh, English people can mostly make a decent gravy in uh, his experience. Yeah, gravy um, is, uh, if you don't buy Gravox, that is, make a decent gravy for your roast. Coffee in Melbourne, according to Anthony, is around $5 a cup. Uh, some of the specialty places cost up to 7 bucks. Crazy, absolutely, but people are still paying for it. That's the issue, isn't it? People pay that price because they love to have their coffee in the morning. They've been brainwashed by the coffee culture uh, Australians have, and it's unbelievable what people are willing to pay for a cup of coffee. I've witnessed it with my own eyes on many, on many an occasion. People go into takeaway coffee shops, pay in Perth four, five dollars a cup also, and uh, take it away with them because they need their coffee experience. Mmm. What else? Spain, oh, Arturo, he's doubling down. Spain has the best food, food in the world, doubling down. Deep roots in Spain. Yeah, Arturo, it's, I don't want to say, I like to use the word best in the world because obviously it's not because everybody is going to say that that is the, uh, the case with their cuisine. It's good? Yes. Is it the best? Debatable. Um... Rick saying that there are a lot of uh, prevalent myths about English cooking that stem from how many people lived in the post-World War 20th century. There we go. Thanks, uh, Rick, for that. Uh, Amanda never understood why they had coffee 
uh, iced the coffee. Can anyone explain? Um, well, basically, it's to turn that hot coffee into a cold coffee is the explanation, uh, Amanda, for that. You uh, order a hot coffee and uh, you pour it over ice and it quickly becomes a, a cold coffee, the Café Con Hielo, which has become very popular, very popular. UK lamb is the best, says Rick, and he's a Portuguese chef. There we go. UK lamb is the best. Uh, according to that, you do get some good cuts of meat in the UK and good cheeses as well. I've said that before and I'll say it again. Good cheeses. Probably uh, as good, if not better, than Spanish cheese, in my opinion. Uh, <laughs> Arturo's still going on there. British stews are some of the best. Also, getting the port. See, that's uh, yeah. So we're we're English cuisine, getting some love. Piri piri chicken in Portugal is awesome. Yeah, here it's just the barbecue chicken. It's uh, everywhere. You can buy it everywhere. Uh, David, it's um it's the favourite takeaway dish of at least where I am here. There's a takeaway chicken shop across the road. There's another one down the street. Uh, lots of restaurants do it, the uh, uh, frango no churrasco, as they call it, uh, and um, it's a very, very popular. People lining up at that restaurant every day to get their chicken. That's it, that's it. Uh, chicken and uh, piano, pork, ro pork uh, ribs on the grill, absolutely there. Absolutely. Uh, let me just stroll to the bottom. English pork sausages uh, with beebs and with beans, I think that is, and toast, says Guillermo. Uh, British sausages, also very good. Can't get a decent sausage in Spain. Haven't found one yet. Spanish variety, uh, just don't uh, cut it in my opinion. But again, that's just my opinion. Get sick of eating chorizo and uh, criollo and... Uh, and um, uh, Chistorra and all of those things. Uh, what else we got going on here? You can't be the Spanish salad, says Dominique. Uh, Spanish salad. Uh, yeah, Spanish do, do salads well, I will say. You can get uh, good salads. Uh, Welsh total. And Dover sold doesn't have to be elaborate. Quality beef doesn't have to be elaborate. The UK has great quality food. Yeah, I, uh, I agree with that. Uh, very good quality food. Another uh, way is uh, how people cook it, of course, but the quality is there. And I've seen some very uh, good butcher shops there as well. Queso Manchego is the best cheese. Uh, Arturo loves to use the word best a lot. That's what I'm taking from this. Uh, Queso Manchego, again, is it the best? It's good. Is it the best? Uh, uh, is it the best? Don't know. It's good, but is it the best? That's the idea, isn't it? Um, what else? Let's have a look here. Excellent cheese in the UK. Janet uh, uh, reaffirming my words here. Uh, absolutely. And uh, milks and creams, of course. Of course. And uh, unrelated, but uh, Colin has to have seven teeth out today. More over the next few weeks. Gum disease, your channel cheers him up. Thank you very much, uh, Colin, for that. I uh, hope uh, that's um, uh, not too, well, seven teeth is uh, quite serious, but uh, hope all goes well with that. Hope all goes well. And a super chat's just come through from Alan, 10 pounds there. I'll add it to the uh, broadcast there. Thank you very much, Alan, for your support. Now I'm going to wrap the live stream up. Thank you very much for watching today. Uh, it's been a pleasure as always. I'll be back again tomorrow for another live stream. So hopefully I'll see you there. Uh, regular videos should be coming out later in the week. I've got to uh, come up with an idea for those videos. But uh, as I said, back tomorrow with another live stream. So hasta entonces, hasta luego, adios, buenas noches.